My next step is to make a simple door. So I've got it 63 inches long and about 21 inches wide. So I've just overlapped the frames over the hardware cloth. So I stretched out the 24 inch hardware cloth on a 26 inch frame. And now we'll make the, I've already cut them, I've got the cut pieces cut. The ones that go between here um, on both sides and on this side, the short pieces that go across here. So they're just offset and that becomes sort of like a cleat that holds these together. And I'm using inch and a quarter wood screws that will um, uh, attach this and not go through all the way through both pieces of the lumber. So let's put those in next. I guess I could move my table a little bit away from this tree. I have a little bit more space, but it's shady on a 102 degree day. It's helpful to be in the shade for a while. go a couple of inches in from the end of the book this one by threes helps not to split the wood and again these inch and a quarter screws don't go all the way through so I don't have to cut anything off so I'll end up with three or four on each end and when I sandwich the hardware cloth in there I'll have um, probably four down each side I did use my square to square it up, and the, the metal is pretty square to begin with, so by using the metal there, I was able to make sure it was square. So you can see you've got a nice straight line up on this side. That helps to square up your door. So we'll just put the side pieces in there. Again, these act like cleats to make sure that that hardware cloth is not able to move holds it in there securely and tightly. Let's line up my edges. I'll do each end first to make sure everything's aligned before I put the ones in the middle that really sandwich this guy in tight. Okay, one side. And then the other. And we'll put the uh, the ones the rest of the way down the sides. So the one by threes make and the hardware cloth make this door nice and lightweight but really nice and sturdy. So um, thousands of openings and closings and such will keep it together for many years. All right, now I can put the ones down the middle. The board is a little bit warped. I didn't realize that board was warped. So I'm gonna pull that back out. I may either have to get another piece or get a clamp and pull that over. It's probably what I'll do is just get a clamp and pull this pull this over the middle before I before I take it down. So I think I'll do that. So I've got the door made, and then next thing is I'm going to put the hinges on, which I've done right here. 
So I have the hinges. I've made them about 14 inches from the top and bottom of the door. I did go ahead and use the inch and a quarter screws. They're a little bit longer and sturdier than the screws that came with the hinges. So next I'm going to mount the door on the coupe. So I've got the door installed. The door is on. And the next part I'm going to do is begin to put the chicken wire across the top. So I've uncoiled part of this roll of chicken wire. What I like to do is these new rolls always have a section that is sort of already wired together and sort of bent. So take my snips and I will find uh, the first one of these rows that's nice and straight. And I will simply cut it so I'm starting with a row that's nice and straight. So I'll just stay on the same line all the way across this row. And that way I'll have a nice piece to start with. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute when I get it on the side of the coop to string it up. So I have the strand. I have the strand of uh, chicken wire stretched out over the top. I'm going to start down here at this corner. I've already put the other one on. I'm going to start by putting in one of the fence staples on the corners just to hold it in place, to hold it where I want it on each side. These little ones I'm using can be kind of tricky. If you've got big hands or big fingers. Those little small, small uh, fence nails, the staples are a little bit difficult to work with, but you can do it. So this hardware, this uh, chicken wire, is four feet wide, and fits just perfectly on these on these panels. So got just enough room it ends up right at the corner right where it should be and I'll try to line this up so it's relatively straight along my board just need a couple of these to hold everything in place in the corners and then I can put the rest of them in I can finish stretching it over to the other side and uh, we'll cut it off and nail it the same way nail it the same way on that side so Every couple of inches, I'm just going to put another staple in. You could also use a, an air stapler or a nail air, air staple gun for this, but out here in the field it's easier just to do this, as few of these as I actually have to do. If I had to do many more of these, I'd probably go ahead and set up the air compressor and, and use that, but just to put in these few staples down the sides, I'm alright doing it by hand. And it's good practice as a homesteader to understand and be able to use your hand tools. So if you don't have power, you know how the hand tools work. A little more effort, but you can surely get it done. It took about an hour. I've got all three rolls on the sides. I'm come back and I'll explain. We'll do the the back part separately but I've got the staples all in along the bottom part the rolls go all the way over the top it took three rolls they're four feet wide just like the panels and they are secured at the bottom with the staples next part is actually kind of fun so I don't know why I find it strangely cathartic to use hog rings or shoat rings to pull these wires tight and put them together but that's the next step. 
All right, the next part is to put the shoat rings or hog rings on to hold the chicken wire onto the panels and to secure the panels tightly. Uh, that's the package that I buy, uh, the package of a hundred of them. And they, each one looks like this. They're very sharp, little staple ends are very sharp. So that's what they look like. So you have this little tool to put them on with. So it just goes into the tool. It's got these little slots that hold it. And then you'll take this and put it, we're gonna do it at each one of the intersections where these come together. And you simply squeeze it on and they lock in place just like that. So we're gonna do this all the way around. Put our shoat rings on to get our wire held tightly to our hog panels. So on the ends and the middle, where each one of the sections of chicken wire joined together, I've got the shoat rings holding the wire on all the way around. So that works really well. Holds those on there, it's nice and secure and tight. You can put them as far apart as you feel like they're needed, but in the end, we're also gonna have a tarp over this to protect them from weather. But you can see, even where they join together, we've got them uh, at each section where the chicken wire joins together. Next, we'll be putting it across the back. So I have not put the hog rings on the back because I tend to end up putting these together. And I'll show you, show you how that goes with the back piece as well. So secured all the way around, got all of the, all of the uh, top part of the fencing put on it. So ready for the next step.